rock well. Radio. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. Radio. 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 Rock well. Radio. Okay, we had a little internet issue, but we're back. <laughs> we're here. This is DJ Rockwell, the nation's number one DJ. Welcome to episode 10 of the Rockwell Radio Show. What was that? <laughs> okay, we got a show lined up for you today like you will never, ever, ever believe. I'm excited. They, you excited? I'm excited, man. I, I'm excited yeah. because I got some of my favorite people online today. That's going to be coming to you talking about one of my favorite subjects. Today, we talk about the beats. The what? The beats. Shout out to every producer who ever plugged in an ASR 10. Shout out to every producer who ever banged out beats on an SP 1200. You're going back there. You're going back. Rocco. Shout out every producer who ever banged out beats on an MPC 2000 or whatever model that you use. Shout out to every producer that ever, ever played any note at all on a keyboard, on a on a on a, on a, a, a two track tape or whatever, a twins tape. I'm telling you, tonight we celebrate the producer, and I am so glad that you're with us because I got some people tonight that I am so honored to have. But before we go another step further. Before we go anywhere further, if you are watching via YouTube, make sure that you subscribe, hit that like button, hit that like button, hit that like button. This is episode 10, and we are not slowing down in the least. If you're watching on Facebook, you know what I want you to do? I want you to make sure that you please hit that like and share button. Hit the like and share button, because I tell you what, it's other people that want to know about what we're talking about here tonight. We're paying tribute to those who make the beats. Now, what makes tonight so special, in addition to the guest that I have with me tonight, we're going to put one of my people on the spot. If you are a true beat smith, you can take whatever's thrown at you and make something out of it. You can make something out of it. And I tell you what, tonight we're going to put Big Dave on the squirm chair. <laughs> Big Dave has accepted the challenge by the end of this show to make something out of nothing. I chose four tracks, four tracks, four classic break beats, and I passed them to him, right? He doesn't know what they are yet, but he's got until the end of the show to make a beat out of them. So with that said, let's get started. Let's introduce some of our guests. Can I start? Well, let, me, let, me, let me set the stage right today. Hold on, let me, let me do this right. To get started, get started, 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 started. coming live, live, live to the Rockwell Radio, Radio, Radio Show. Radio show. Get my voice together. My voice together. <laughs> live to the Rockwell Radio, Radio, Radio Show. Radio show. Please welcome, please welcome as our guest, our guest, our guest first, up, first up from Stress Free Productions, Street Productions, Street Productions my, man, my man, your man, your man Steve, Steve Chase. Chase. Yo, 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 what's up, DJ Rockwell? Ramu. Oh, my. 
Oh my God, yo, it's, it's, it's my honor to be on your show. And you know what I'm saying? I've been following every week, man. Just, yo, I'm happy to be here, man, just to talk about the culture and celebrate the culture, man, and, and push it forward. But we got more people in the room, B. We got more people in the room because when we get everybody on, we're going to talk about y'all individually. Now, let me get it right. right. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. To welcome, to welcome, welcome my, guest my guest on the Rock World Radio, Radio Show. show. Been DJing all his, all his life out of Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. Welcome, welcome to the Rock World Radio, Radio Show, show. Burman, 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 DJ Iceman. Iceman. What's up? What's up? Peace, peace. Salute, DJ Rockwell. Thank you for having me on. It's an honor and a privilege. And uh, man, I'm I'm ready to, to to run my mouth like I usually do. So Come let's on, get it popping. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> now, let me get back and move. All the way out of Phoenix. This sister is a professional. She knows what she's doing behind the boards. A songwriter, a beat maker, a good sister. Welcome to the show, Sister Ariane Nicole. Welcome, sis. I can't can I get I can't get an audio from her though. Can you tell the audio again? Oh, there we go. All right. That's so Mary Nicole. There she goes. It's a blessing to be on with you guys. I'm humble to be on with you, brother. Oh, Please. this is about to be fun. This is about to be fun. But we're not done. There are two more people in the waiting room. Let's bring them on. Live from Atlanta, Georgia. They modeled their sound after Tribe Called Quest. Jay Dilla, P Rock, DJ Premier. These boys are bad. Please welcome to the show my brothers, brother born and colleague of Evolution. Be known. Salute. Salute. How you go, family? What up? <laughs> they, they laid back in the cut, man. They laid back in the car like what? <laughs> What's the show, brothers? So, man, just maintain conservation, man. Just make it um, great music for the masses. You I've been know waiting on this show all week. All week. Now, I got one more. E even though he's sitting right here. I gotta still bring him on, I guess, right? <laughs> you know, yes, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's do it. With no further delay. The one that's gonna put himself on the line. He's gonna make a beat with tracks you don't even know. He's co-founder of the Do For Self movement. He's the producer of this show. My brother, like no other, please welcome Big Day. Ooh, you know something, me, Jay. When I come here. I can't forget sitting next to Big Dave is my pride, my pride and joy. My 19-year-old Morehouse man, Big Sadiq, who's also a beat maker in the making. Give him a hand, y'all. <laughs> yes, man, now. the coffee for us over here. <laughs> right. So, so let's 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 look at the history of who's in front of us. And again, if you're tuned in, be sure to share this show. Because right now, we not, we don't got no, no lightweights in front of us. And you'll know why I say that in just a minute. So again, hit the like button, hit the share button. And again, I want to firstly thank every one of you for taking time out of your day to join us here at the DJ Rockwell Radio Show. This show is special for me because my background is also not just DJing, but production too. And it plays a crucial part of the conversation. It was Iceman who I thought, who I think it was Brother Iceman who said some time ago that perhaps producing should be considered the fifth element of, of hip hop. Wasn't that super ice? Yes, it was. We're going to get into that. 
let's talk about a little bit of each of you all's individual history. Uh, Ariane, singer songwriter, founder of Music Alive, Music is Alive production, specializes, of course, in music and media. You are the chair of the Phoenix Minister, excuse me, Ministry of Arts and Culture. Pardon me. And lastly, you serve as the West Coast point of contact for the Songwriters Association called Writing Sessions America. That's Ariane, y'all. That's pretty dope hey, right she, there. She ain't no mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I think I follow them too. Yo, if you don't, you should. Let's look at yeah, yeah. Down Center. Evolution be known. Born in Kali. Atlanta based production team. Partners. Been making beats since 09 out the gate. Brother Born is a record collector, a vinyl enthusiast. That's dope by itself. <laughs> and Kali former DJ. And as I said in your introduction, you've been inspired by the greats, i.e., Pete Rock, Q Tip, with the Uma, um, Primo, Dilla, and the, the list goes on of that boom bap, that boom bap sound. Ninth Wonder. And you all have been working diligently in, diligently in your professional for quite some time, producing regional and local MCs and otherwise. Right. Now, Steve Chase. Again, my brother. And when I say my brother, in this case, he's my blood brother. We are brother. Beat since 1996. He is also uh, proficient in the art of mixing and engineering. Since 08, he's a studio owner in the Decatur, Georgia area. He's a self-taught bass player and also an MC and a vocalist in his own right. That's let me, Steve Chase. Let me cut in for a second. Be that still they amazes me. Watching V Steve Chase pick up the bass from nothing but an idea to what he is now on the bass, pretty beastly. Yo, I'm telling you, the people on screen right now are wow. joke. 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 Now, let me continue with those who are in front of me. DJ Iceman, like I said in this introduction, out of Brooklyn, been DJing since he was nine years old. This brother has taken up the production mantle in 2017. He's the founder and owner of Big Boss Entertainment, excuse me, Big Boss Beats and now Big Boss Records. Uh, brother is a proficient practitioner of the boom bap sound in his production style. And he his associations are crazy. He's associated with Wu-Tang Worldwide DJ Coalition. He's associated with ghetto government officials. He's associated with the Dirty Klansman, just to name a few. He's got some production credits that you won't believe, i.e. He's done music for Havoc of Mob Deep. He's going to be some for Hellraiser of Sons of Man, just to name a few. The list goes yeah. on and on. You are not dealing with no lightweights. And in closing, if you're watching this, hit the share button, hit the share button, because the fun is about to get started as we get finished with the introduction of who's who on your screen right now. Sitting right next to me on this side right here, my brother Dave, also of the hip-hop production team, Stress Free. Big Dave right here, this guy, making beats since 1996. Is that right, Dave? Sounds about right, even if it's just on the, on the kitchen table. He produced <laughs> the introduction track that you hear every week for the Rockwell Radio Show. He's the co-founder of the Do For Self Music Seminar. And this cat right here produced also many, many local hip-hop artists and regional hip-hop artists. So again, welcome to the Rockwell Radio Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get big started. As I said, for those of you who are watching, get ready for this. Get ready for this. <laughs> My man, Sean. <laughs> what up, Sean? <laughs> get ready for this. What we're about to do right now is something that is pretty profound. We're about to put Dave on the spot. Just 20 minutes ago, I gave Dave a jump drive. And I said, you can't open this jump drive 
until the beginning of the show. Dave was given these four tracks. Dave was given Ashley's Ashley's Rose Clip. Sounds like this. Oh, okay. He was given that. Every big boy, every producer knows this record. He's got to use that as track number one. Track number two. Do you know this one? Okay. That's track number two that Davis got to use. Can y'all hear that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah now, here's number three. Every producer, every DJ knows this song. <laughs> yes. He's got to do something with that. He's got to do something with it. Now, I said, now those are all classic joints. I got to throw Dave a wild card. <laughs> so I started digging in my crates. What wild card can I throw Dave? Can I throw Dave? And this is the wild card that I came up with. Now listen what he says. But you wrong. See the blues come from way back. I'm gonna skip around a little bit. And I'm gonna tell you. Right. Please. <laughs> Please. Please. So, so we wish you luck here on the Rockwell Radio Show. And we're going to start this interview. So Dave is going to be over there working while we having a conversation. Sir, you have now 45 minutes. That's cool. Now, do I, as far as usage of these, am I to make four different tracks? Am I to? No, no, just one. Okay, got it, but got you it. have to touch all four of those tracks. You have to touch all four of those joints. All right, it's so. gonna be epic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna take Dave out the mix for a minute and come back and check on him. Now let's start here. Yo, I got some questions today, y'all. Uh oh, let me uh, move you out. Okay. Okay, that should mute you out. Do it again? Hmm. Let me see. I'm going to get you out of here. Uh, try that. Hmm. Oh, I know. I know. My bad. My bad. There you go. There we go. I had to get him out there. All right. Now, can you hear at all? Okay. A little technical difficulties. Let's, let's get it together because we're doing something we never did before. Okay, use this. There you go. Now, I wrote a few questions, and hopefully, in this forty-five minutes, we can get through them all. Uh, these questions are set up to be asked, um, and some of them will be directly to individuals, but generally, they'll be panel-like discussion. So everyone will be asked to chime in on some of these questions. Uh, at the end, we'll open up. And matter of fact, we may even get a chance to uh, allow those who are watching via YouTube or Facebook to uh, put a text question up, and we can post that question aloud. That question. So, I see in the chat room already is my brother Apocalypse. Salute, always supporting. Sean Lee in the um, chat room. Salute. I see my brother Derek. Salute, always in the chat room supporting. But let's start with these questions. Let's start with the obvious one, the biggest one in the room. Let's start with the elephant. What is a producer? Because people always confuse this, and it becomes like a big gray matter of what is the expectation 
of a record producer. So what I'm going to do, and this will be the order in which we always answer. We're going to answer in a clockwise fashion, starting with Brandon as uh, e Chase, Iceman, Arion, and Evolution B. No. So what is the producer? Is a beat maker and a producer the same thing? Let me clarify what is his role. Okay, a beat maker and a producer are, are, are not the same thing, but they can be. You can be a beat maker and get a record done from start to finish if, if you're so inclined. But a producer is not necessarily somebody who even touches an instrument or, or a drum machine. A producer could also be somebody that finds a beat maker and pairs the beat maker up with a writer or a rapper and gets the song done, and that's a producer. So it, it depends on the, on the, the context. Okay. Brother Ice Man. Yeah, just, just to piggyback off of that, you know what I'm saying? A beat maker, I mean, in the, in the simplest form, a beat maker bank, makes beats and a producer makes songs. <laughs> you know, a, a, a producer is more of a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? They get everything together. The beat maker, they have to uh, coach the, the artist. They coach the artist. They, you know what I'm saying? They get all the instrumentalists in. They put the whole package together. All right, a beat maker, I mean, usually just sits and makes the beat. You know, I consider myself a, a beat maker first and then a producer because I don't coach artists, I don't work with a lot of artists. So, in that terms, I'm a beat maker. But when I'm putting together an instrumental album or a beat tape, that's when I get into producer mode because then I have to get everything together, sequence the whole album, and you know, do all that. Okay, okay. Let's talk to the mighty Evolution Belong Atlanta based crew. What, what's the producer, bro? I, I would say, you know, just what Iceman said, just and what Steve Chase said. It's the same thing. Um, to me, a beat maker just makes beats um, and not really concerned about the product itself. Whereas a producer, you know, they kind of start from the beginning to the end, they kind of coach them up. Um, I liken it to somebody like, um, just, just I know, I know how we feel about him right now. But Kanye West, I seen it happen. I see him how he coached Jay Z. I see how he coached Common, on how to, how to, how to, the cadence on however the beat he created, the type of cadence he should have for the track. I love him. So for that case, it's like it's like a producer. He's he he sees the vision from the beginning to the end. And also, you got producers Excellent. like Quincy Jones and um, Puff Daddy that are, that don't. Make the beats, but they they can pick the samples, pick the records, pick the uh, beat maker, and put them together. So that's how that's how. I see. Okay, we, we lost our sister Ariane Nicole, so I'm hoping that uh, she comes back and joins us. So we are waiting on her to also join us, so we can continue uh, the line of questioning. But we'll keep on moving instead. But until she gets back, let me make sure that everybody knows where to find us. You're watching the Rockwell Radio Show. We're here every Saturday at Eastern. 6 p.m. Central. And this show focuses on the relationship between politics and hip hop and social activism. And I tell you what, we can't talk about the social movement without the soundtrack. In our generation, that soundtrack is hip hop. So let's move on as uh, Big Dave grinds away at those samples next door real quick. And when the sister comes back, we will uh, catch her up and ask her these questions. Um, let's ask this question. And this is a fact. And some people stand on different places where they're concerned. And this also is true for the DJ community. And we, we complain about this. Well, some complain about this. Um, but it's, it's, it's actual fact. Equipment is getting cheaper and easier to purchase by the day, which allows every and anybody to get in the game. So therefore, the pool was already big. So now that anybody can get in the game if they buy a sample of this or a laptop of that or download so-and-so program. As a producer, and here's the point, it's a competitive game and now it's more competitive than ever. What do you do? How do you differentiate yourself? How do you keep yourself above the fray and ahead of the crowd? Uh, for me, I believe, um, and I, I just said this to a producer that I, I admire very much the other day, um, 
I think there are because like like you said, access accessibility means that now everybody can do it. But a lot of people I think make beats from their head. Or they make beats from a, a, a template or a certain they can they can reproduce a certain sound. But the guys who can make beats from the heart, the guys who can make beats from their emotions, you can you can tell the difference between between those guys and um kind of the people who just do it because it's available. Mm -hmm. And uh that's uh, that's for me that's what's most important coming, you know. I don't normally sit down to making track unless I feel it first. Mm. Uh, and that's uh I think that's a major difference maker. Ask me what you say. Hmm. Uh, you know, being being a DJ for so long, I've seen all the evolutions. I started with a Bozak rotary mixer and Thorn belt drive turntables, all the way up to controllers. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? All the way up to controllers. Just because you can go out and get the gear doesn't mean you can go out and get the skills. Those skills have to be hmm you know, uh, 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 manifested and, and worked on. You know what I'm saying? You just can't throw on a white coat and call yourself a cook. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you gotta sit here and learn how to work all this stuff and, and, and do all this, you know? I've only been making beats for three years, all right? I'm a competent beat maker. I think I'm pretty nice, but there's still a lot of stuff I need to learn. Right, right. You know, and 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 that's what that's what everybody. You just can't just buy a piece of gear and and, and call yourself an expert. You know, like right. like the old saying goes. You know, what I'm saying you could pour you could pour syrup on shit, but it don't make it pancakes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Actual fact spoken there. Terrible. Evolution, talk to it. It's it's a it's, no, first. It's a love. You got to love what you do, and yeah. love go through hit love have rights. To make everything come together, you know what I'm saying? We love music. We would <clears> yeah. before anything else. So we get the machine. You you gotta go through. Sometimes you sometimes be rocking the boat. Sometimes you not. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And and, 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 and 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 that's a lot how life goes. You know what I'm saying? And it has moves. It has swings. And it's. It, but the, the music itself tells stories and it tells about our stories and each individual producer stories in it. So, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, uh, 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 like, 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 let's say you, you, you got to love equipment, you got to know, you got to love this, love producing, you got to love making first, you got, you got call before you go, you got to love it. Period. Yeah. You got to love it. A lot of people don't love it. They're just doing it, doing it. After here. Hmm. In the middle, people just doing it, doing it, and make money. Ain't about no damn money. It's about do you really love what you do? And really to satisfy you, and then you have to satisfy others. You got to love how to be a great servant, man, in your craft. Yeah. That's from a man who collect vinyl. Vinyl collection is an art within itself because you got to know what to look for, where to find it, what's the quality, when you find it, what's in print, what's out of print. That's a that's a game in itself. Yep. Yes, it is. So, brother, for that answer. So uh, we're still waiting on our sister to come back, and we surely hope that we didn't lose her um, from us completely. But we're going to keep moving. But I must say, right now, you're tuned into the Rockwell Radio Show. This is DJ Rockwell, the nation's number one DJ. And we got with us tonight Steve Chase. We got with us DJ Iceman. And of course, from the bottom left hand of your screen, our brothers out of Atlanta, Georgia, Evolution Be Known. Let's keep the questions rolling. Now, this, this particular group of questions is directed right at uh, DJ, DJ Iceman and Kali. Why? Because both are DJs or former DJs. Listen to this, brothers. DJing seems to be the natural predecessor of being a producer. So how did that skill set help inform your skill set as a producer? We'll start with Kali. 
Well, I'll say um, I started DJing probably around 11, 12 years old. Uh, my older brother was a DJ, and I just uh, followed him. But in the me within that, I always felt like beats was a part of me because that's what drew me to the music. That's what drew me to hip hop was the beat. So you know, I can remember hearing uh, Benita Applebaum and blowing up and uh, uh, me myself and I by De La Soul, you know. And as as a shorty, as a young man, that I didn't know what it was until I started developing and growing. And what eventually happened was the music. When the music started changing. It started going away from the things that I like. So it's a natural progression to continue to produce the things that you like. And so that's kind of how our, our style is catered to, you know, to that to that boom bap sound, which it changed over time and from the nineties until um to today's music. So for me myself, it was a natural progression to go from from DJing and hearing the things that I like to hear to DJing and, and starting to not hear the things I wanted to hear. To me, saying I'm gonna make what I want to hear. So that's how that. That's how. It went. You that. know, the, I started DJing in in 1982, where there really wasn't a whole lot of hip hop music, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? So it it, it is a natural progression because if you look at you take 19 of the 20 top producers in hip hop of all time, they all started as DJs. From RZA to Premier to Marley Mall, Pete Rock, you know what I'm saying? They all started as DJs. As a yeah. DJ, we already have the musical knowledge. We know what people want to hear because we have to play this on the dance floor every night. We got to oh, get people right. moving. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it carries over into the beat. You want to make beats that are going to get people moving. All right. Most, D most DJs. All right. If you're a DJ and you're, let's say, 40 years old, you have at least 60 years of musical knowledge crammed into your head. That's yes, <laughs> it. Period. Come on. Come on. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, you're going to take all that musical knowledge and put it into your beats. Right. Right. You know, it, 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 just, it just is what it is. <laughs> That's right. I see our sister is back in the waiting room. Let's bring her back live to the stream. She's back. Hey. <laughs> he was all sad. <laughs> it's only right that I give you an opportunity to catch up and answer the question. Um, the first question on the table, and you didn't miss much. The first question on the table was, what is the producer? How does Ariane Nicole define producer? Okay, wow. So I define producer as one who puts projects together, who puts together the record. Um, it's, you know, you can compose the beat, the beat composer, but um, you bring, um, you can select the track, you select the artist, a songwriter, and a studio, and you make it happen. Um, so that's a, a, a very, a level of production. And, um, and of course, com composition and beat making. Okay, okay. Here's the second question that you missed, and this will catch you up all the way. Now that equipment is becoming less expensive, and almost anybody can get in the game now. How do you keep yourselves distinct and separate ahead of the competition since now the pool is bigger than ever? I'm going to tell you, the only the real thing that really separates us is knowledge. Mm, say it again. You need to study. You can get, I, I, I sat on some equipment for a while, but I didn't know how to use it. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Hello. <laughs> I, I got to stop and ask you. I got to dig deeper on that for one second before we continue. You said knowledge. Now that's a big pull. When you say knowledge, can you be a bit more specific of what kind of knowledge is applicable here? Well, okay. In this um, seminar here, right here, um, the knowledge of, um, of course, composition, the knowledge of yourself. Um, you might like to make, you know, the drums first or the melody might hit you first. Get comfortable with being yourself. Hello. Um, and yeah, get around other beat makers too. I would say that. Um, get around That's other people. And um, That's you know, key. Vibe sessions and things. I myself, I love the digital production. I like live musicians too. 
And so that is involved in beat making. You know, you can hook up with a dope violinist and things like that. Um, so when it when I say study your craft, you know, I'm saying like, you know, for instance, like you said, how to make beats that day. Well, if your kick drums are sounding kind of dry, don't be afraid to look it up <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> And there's a, um, well, one thing I was checking out was that, you know, you can simply, one trick is like to cut your high frequency so it'll rumble more, you know. Like that. I hope y'all are listening. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. So it sounds great. But I like, you know, collaboration and stuff too, because I try to learn, you know, so much where I can't even get involved in the process. Okay. So I need to master one little thing and then I want to collaborate with others who are really dope in day way. The stuff she just told y'all, people go to school to learn. And we're going to have a lot more of that in this dialogue. Now, let's, let's look at our brother over here for a minute. Big Dave? <laughs> you right over there? <laughs> so, everybody, this is Big Dave. If you're just joining us. Dave was given four records. He just sat them at the top of the show. And Dave has to come up with a banging beat by the end of this show. So everybody wish Dave well. <laughs> so we're going to keep this event moving. Now, Let's go back to the interview. Oh, but by the way, let me do a quick station ID. If you're watching via YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that like and share button. You're tuning into the Rockwell Radio Show right now. And the name of this particular episode, episode 10, is How to Make Beats That Bang. And with us are some of the best that you've never heard of. And tonight we're going to find out why. With us is my brother, Steve Chase. DJ Iceman, Evolution Be Known, and Arion Nicole. Let's take a quick break to do this. Now, we can't have a show about music and don't play no music. I, can I play a track? And I'm talking mainly to the viewer. I want y'all to get ready to snap that neck. I want to shout out to my man, DJ Papi out of St. Louis. Big Dave, he's wishing you well. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. So, <laughs> so you, you got the audience with you, D. You, you got hope, you got helpers with you. So mm -hmm. now I want to play a beat. So everybody that's in the chat room, I want to respond. Let's first go to Atlanta, Georgia, and get a taste of what our brothers evolution be known. Are cooking up, are, are cooking up. Are you ready to hear this? Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. Let's do it. Hey. Y'all give it up. Oh. Evolution be known. Give it up to Evolution be known. Masters. What are you talking about? Yes, sir. That's bad heat. <laughs> Let's get some feedback from the from the room. Yo, they, they feeling that. They 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 feeling that. They Thank feeling you. that. Thank you. They feeling that. Yo. Mm -hmm. So when we play a few more of these bangers from our guest today, make sure that you show some love, give some feedback. If they got any heat, give them a thumbs up, give them a thumbs down, give them that fire, let them know what they rocking with. Um, tell so us about how that, how that beat came about, Evan, you know. What's, what's the science behind that beat? Um, 
I was messing around with the Erica Badu sample. That's one of my um favorite tracks Erica Badu did, Other Side of the Game. And I, I came across this loop, and it's just, I was like, this is a crazy loop. Um, it had the whole, it had all the elements in it. So, you know, I started putting the beat together, and um, I reached out to one of my, one of uh, me and uh, Boris partners down in L.A. Um, this brother, his name is Daniel Crawford. Um, he's accomplished right now, man. He's working with Jazzy Jeff. He's been working with Raphael Sadiq, Mary J. Blige. He's been touring right now as a keyboard player. So once I gave, once I laid the foundation for the beat, um, I had him play the keys on it, and it just, it came all together, man. Like, he's amazing, man. Like, he, he, it was, it was a dope collab, collaboration, but that beat itself, um, is like one of our top beats that most people request, most people like, you know. So, I mean, it was special to me, so. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's ask some questions. Let's ask another question, and we'll come back and play another beat. Now, and this this one is directed directly at our sister Ariana Nicole. Sister Ariane, being a songwriter, is that a skill set that you find that comes in handy in the production process? And if so, how? Well, um, for me personally, I mean, I would say yes, definitely the ability to listen to adult production and, and write to it, you know, as a songwriter is definitely um, a, a great skill that comes in handy. Um, I think another thing that I've learned too was the fact that the difference between calling yourself an artist, even though you may be, and then calling yourself a songwriter. Songwriter is your business. Um, artist is more liable to require money. You know what I mean by, you know, kind of like the the wardrobe and all these kind of things that, you know, don't get me wrong, it's, it's great, but from the music business standpoint, rather call yourself a songwriter. Mm. And so, yeah, because um many business ventures see you more as a liability than a money. Did everybody hear and understand what she just said? Mm. Positioning is everything, and titling is everything. It seems. How about mm -hmm. We are now at the uh, quarter of our. We might run over a little bit to give Dave a bit more time. <laughs> 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 let's, let's see. You hit him hard. You hit him hard, Rockwell. You hit him hard. We see him at the drum machine pounding away. <laughs> <laughs> and he's working, and I cannot wait to hear what he comes up with. You are listening to the Rockwell Radio Show. Our guests today are Steve Chase, DJ Iceman, Evolution Be Known, and Ariane Nicole. If you're watching for the first time, welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Make sure if you're on YouTube, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, and join us every week, and you'll be notified every time that we go live and do dope shows like this. Week. Here's the next question. Check this out. Now, this question is for everybody. I want y'all to listen to this question. We often hear people say, it's not about the tools, i.e. which drum machine, which brand, or, or et cetera, that you use. And this is the conversation we as DJs have every day. It's not about the tools, it's about the user. Would you all say that's a true or false statement? Or or there's some tools that are absolutely mandatory that, that a producer should use. Because the um, because some some I mean, some genres of music benefit from sounding really retro and almost I guess you know, trashy, you could say. So I mean, it's I, I really think it's all about the user because they can you know I guess like dubstep. Like, Maybe have a seventy-five dollar, or I ain't even say dubstep, but just you know, certain stuff is, that's just uh, sounds better at a certain rate, at a certain uh, level of quality. So you know, you can have a little hundred uh, dollar keyboard that makes something great, or you know, have a two thousand dollar EPCX and, and make something trash. But I, I really think it's uh, 
about all about his music. Mm. What's your yeah, I, I have to agree that it is basically about the user, you know what I'm saying? Because you look at somebody like Nice Wonder, all right, we've all seen him get down on the machine and the MPC and all this. What a lot of people don't know is a lot of his first beats, like major hits, was done at FL Studio. And you would have never have known it if he didn't tell you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, if, if, if you have the knowledge of your gear and what you're doing and, you know, know how to work your way around stuff, man, you you make, you know, you make greatness out of anything. Hello. So our, our listeners are informing us that there's some sort of background noise. And I, I don't know how to isolate it. I know it's not coming from outside. Um, and we can't, uh, I can't figure out what that sound is. There's a, a low frequency uh, on the on the back, I can barely I can hear it. The uh, the users can hear it, so I don't know what that is or how to isolate that. We'll we'll try to figure that out as we go along, but we'll keep moving. Um, all right. If you are in the chat room, if you're standing about watching on YouTube and FB, we're about to play another beat. Let's go right to the um, Decatur, Georgia. You're in Decatur, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> he said the beat that we want to hear your feedback on. This is from your brother right in the middle of the screen, Steve Chase. Let's go. Get up, Steve Chase. That's the heat, boy. <laughs> That's that man, heat. That was crazy. Okay. <laughs> My man's. What's, what say ye in the break in the chat room? What say ye? What say ye? Okay. Real dope. Real dope. Real dope. Yeah, yeah. Now. 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 Right, like ninety seven. Say ye, come on yeah. now. This is the Rockwell Radio Show. We don't bring no chumps on the show. Tell us, <laughs> oh, this ain't no joke. And, and, and let me say also to my viewing audience, um, in in my haste of of uh, preparing the show, I didn't get a chance to ex a blanket extension to all guests to play a beat for that. I, I apologize to them, and I apologize to you all as well. But we will definitely make sure you all know where to go and hear some of their music as well. Let's get back to a uh, biased opinion right here, B. Well, she, she your wife, but her opinion counts. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> her opinion is real biased. But let's get back. Let's ask a few more questions. And then we're going to check back on um, Big Dave to see how he's hanging over there. Big Dave, you still alive? <laughs> still alive? You still alive over there? I'm working on track number two. Oh! He, he said he on number two already. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, let's, let's go on with the questioning. And we're getting near to the end of the show. Now, the sound is a lot better. <laughs> I want you all to fill in this blank. When I heard, I stopped everything I was doing and went straight to the lab. Have you ever had that experience? Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
when you heard something that was so crazy, it made you look like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it, it made you make that face. <laughs> so <laughs> where, give me a story. When I heard blank, I stopped everything I was doing. I said, oh, hell no. I'm going back to the lab. B, what was that song for you? So last year, and I, I, I've probably had several of these moments over the years, but last year I was in Virginia at the MTS uh, Beat Clinic. And there was some, uh, some, some local producers there along with uh, Knotts, of course, being out of Virginia. And Danon Porter was there. And we were at a venue where they were just playing beats for us. And Denon played this unreleased song. It was a remix he did of, uh, it was Rick Ross and Nipsey Hussle. And this was soon after Nipsey Hussle had just got killed. Right. And they played this beat, man. And man, it was like grown men was almost crying. Wow. In this place. And and, and, uh, and I, I had heard of Denon before, but that that day he just blew my mind. And I came right home. And made a track that um, actually is the track that Sadiq just uh, had rapped on. How about it? Okay. <laughs> the, the track that's, that's going on the album. So yeah, that was so that's that's a recent one for me. And um, yeah, it's not not a lot of instances actually make me yo. I gotta go. I, I guess maybe I'm not that type of dude. But last year, you know, Denon Porter is a freaking beast. Okay. <laughs> the problem. Ice man. Man, there's like there I'm I'm a beat junkie anyway, so it's like anytime I hear some really good beats, I gotta go back to the lab. Um let's just say my top three so far to go by Jay Dilla. That beat is just so crazy to me. Um Who Banging by Mac 10. I don't know if y'all ever heard it. it was it was on the substitute soundtrack. Come on. Come on. That mm -hmm. is like one of the hardest West Coast beats I ever heard in my life. I was just like, oh my God. And just recently, um, Rottweiler, Czar, that new Buster Rhymes joint. Yeah. <sighs> Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, yeah, those those are it right there. Any, anything like that, I'm I'm at the machine just tapping away. I'm like, oh my God. When I'm I done. heard that, that was me. That, that I was making the Bill Cosby staying fakes for sure. Evolution be known. Talk to us. Y'all unmute it. Unmute yourself. Evolution be known is muted. You got to unmute your mic. Turn your mic yeah. on. <laughs> Are we good? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. You hear me? When you're not speaking, and, and thank you all for taking the initiative, when you're not speaking, go ahead and mute yourself so that'll kill all background noise. Thank you for doing that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, put this, uh, this, this track in Chicago. And uh, I, I, I was like, man, this is crazy. So he heard it. I heard it first. Yeah, I, I played it to Clay. I said, Clay? Just my nice was it? I said, no. He heard it. He said, oh hell, we got it. <laughs> and uh, uh, now he, he just and and, and it's a lot of records I got that I play, and a lot of stuff went on the first album, and uh, it, it just immediately, immediately had to be done right on right on the spot. So, uh -oh. I had, it's two instances for me. Um, when I was a DJ, I got this, I was part of a record pool and I got a record. It was it was white label and all it had was Slum Village on it. Slum Village. This, this, this was 98. Yeah. 98. So they hadn't came out yet and it, and it had no name, nothing. So when I heard um, Players, oh, I was like, uh, that's oh, when yeah. I wanted to, that's when I really wanted to get into beat making. Mm -hmm. um, and then like, yeah, um, yeah, players and um, the players. um, the look of love, and um, uh, I think it was um, um, I don't know with the with the uh, James Brown cuts. crazy, crazy, crazy. crazy. Yes. But then recently, I just heard I don't know if you ever heard a tall black guy, but I, um, I he um, he made he flipped the um, Flavor in Your Air remix and he flipped the Marvin Gaye sample. That made me stop. I was like, yo, I got to go back to the lab. <laughs> like, that's, the, I mean, 
it was crazy because he played it for Rottweiler, and Rottweiler jumped out of his seat. I had the same reaction. So wow, that, that's the, that. I mean, you got to check it out. The Flavor in Your Ear remix by Tall Black Guy, crazy. Okay, oh. he out of uh, he out of Detroit. Right. Tall Black Guy. Okay, he was yeah. truly noted he, for Tall Black Guy. Sister, yeah. you know, what 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 made you stop and say, "Oh no, I got to go back right now." <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know the brother's name. Um, it was like during like the, the first part of the quarantine mm -hmm. where it was like beat maker battles. And I was just skimming through. It was like an Instagram live or something. And this guy played this crazy stuff. I was like, oh my God, like I screen recorded like so I could keep hearing it. You know, like oh my goodness. And then there was another one. Um, it was off of one of Nas's albums. Like the production was so insane. And look at me. I'm so bad with titles and stuff. I just hear it. But I was like, the composer, they really composed the mess out of it. Like the pianos and everything, it was so lively. Like they sat there and produced that song around him. It wasn't nothing like he could be. And Come on. rap to it, you know? They produced it around him. And, um, and I gotta say, another record that um, gets me lost is really yeah, like Nice yeah, Under yeah. the Lion. I really absolutely, that. absolutely. And yeah. remember, when you're not speaking, please uh, go ahead and mute yourself so we don't so we kill as much of the background as possible. Now, we're almost at the end of the show. We're almost there. And I tell you what, Dave, we want to hear that beat. We will. And you, he said he didn't get just one out of those. He said he got two. Uh -huh. Not one, but two. And we're also going to hear from my son, Sadiq, novice beat maker on the desk. And we want to make sure that we support and, and, and push and show love. So, before we go, we're going to hear from the 19-year-old beat maker uh, here in the house with us on the Rockwell Radio Show as well. We're down to the last two questions. Um, let's get at it. But before we move on, make sure that if you are watching, and I can't emphasize this enough, hit the like button, hit the share button, because we're a new podcast. We want to cover as much ground as we can to share this great message of, of hip hop, self empowerment, social activism, and black politics with our people because hip hop is the glue amongst it all. So we're here to show you the power of this culture called hip hop and how it is impacting the planet if properly used. So let's get to these last couple of questions. Let's talk chemistry. Do you send your music to anybody who requested, anybody who cuts the check? Or what are you looking for in an artist? What, what kind of requirements do you have to work with somebody? Or you were just sending out, hey, you got a check? Take this beat. And I'll just get my, my money on the back end. Or how, what are you looking for? What kind of chemistry is uh, your standard? B? Oh. Uh. So well, obviously you can't be rapping about murdering and killing people just from a moral standpoint. But if you do it dope enough, I might still give you a beat. Uh, <laughs> what Master A said, murder, 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 kill, kill, kill. <laughs> I, I would, you don't have to be necessarily dope on the mic, but it definitely helps, but but my thing is if you if you're passionate about what you do, if you um if you do what you do with with, with passion, whether it's whether it's rapping or singing, uh, I'm I'm liable to, you know to to work with you. Um, but if you're in there just messing around and you're not you know you just just kind of trying it out, I ain't really serious, you know the uh, you know the number one number one thing probably turns me off is uh, time. Uh, a time waster, because uh, you know you can't get that back. So it takes a you know you got to be kind of special for me to say no, but you got to be kind of be special for me to for me to say yeah too. Okay, interesting, interesting, brother Ice. You know me personally, I'm I'm a culture first type of dude. So you know what I'm saying. Like all my affiliations are basically like Wu affiliations. So between GGO, hundred and forty four thousand chosen few zoo bullies and stuff like that. So they always going to get the first pick of any beats that I do. You know what I'm saying. And aside from that, I'm not one for following trends. So 
you know, I don't really like throw my my beats aren't really made for like trap guys and stuff like that. I mean, if, right. if, if you're a trap rapping, you're really dope and you can ride one of my beats, then hey, it, it is what it is. But you know what I'm saying? For for more or less, it's, it's more of a business thing for me, who I work with or whatever. I mean, if you're just going to sit there and play around and waste my time, when they, hey, take this $30 lease. You know what I'm saying? If, if right. you're really going right. to get into it, you know what I'm saying? Then buy you the exclusive and, and, and let's see what you can do. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? I'm still going to be doing me. You know? Evolution be long. Be known. Okay. Well, um, for me, um, I, it's important to, to be able to work with somebody. Chemistry is important because you don't want to um, work with an artist that's trying to get you to change mm. your own sound just because right. they want to be. Mm. And we run across that a couple of times where, you know, somebody want to sound that that's not us and that becomes problematic. You know, also, um, you want to be able to stand next to wh whatever you produce right. and feel good about it. You don't want to make a beat and say, um, I, I don't like the artist, but it was a check because at the end of the day, um, I couldn't do a beat for Soldier Boy unless I produced them, unless I walked him through it. I couldn't just give him a beat and then he say something crazy and then I, I, I can't say that's, that's, that's my credit. I, I want credit for that. You don't want to, you want to sound, you want to feel good about, um, what you producing, you know, for whatever artist you producing for. So mm -hmm. definitely chemistry is important. Very good. Yeah. Answer. Very good answer. So they got to think something about it. Sorry, brother, you want to speak on that boy? I said, you, they got to have something, a message to the music, something. That's right. That I tell like, uh, the best way to tell like Kuali said, just, uh, I, I, don't, I expect them to be like me, but they got to have some type of consciousness. And then in their lyrics, so everybody mm -hmm. not clicking because it's me, but they got to have some type of country. They they got to be responsible in their lyrics and their craft, and that's what's wrong now. Nobody don't want nobody don't want to be conscious or hard accountable with their craft, mm -hmm. what they present to the people. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what's wrong with that. That's what's wrong with that. Yeah, that's what's wrong with that. Anybody got the check or do you need something from them more? Oh, oh yeah, definitely more, you know, from the school that we come from. Um, just what um Evolution Be Known um just said. Um, it's the same, you know, it's about chemistry. It's about chemistry. And you have every right to say this is not what I produce, this is not what I make, you know, it's your world. Um right. and so, you know. And your lane is powerful. You can mm. produce and receive so much just by staying in your lane. So it's not like, okay, if I reject you, I ain't gonna get no money. No, I just found my school. I found my world. You know, I found my, you know, lane, you know, not to be redundant. But um, yeah, I know it's not the end of the show, but I mean, speaking in terms of chemistry, you know, low key. Um, myself, you know, as a writer, I'm working with Evolution Be Known. So come on now. Mm -hmm. That collab is um, definitely in the works. Okay. You heard it first right here on the Rockwell Radio. Right. Show. I don't think, should I leak it right now or what? <laughs> you, you heard it first here. <laughs> so, okay, man, I, I, I am loving this. But, you know, as I'm going back over my questions, I, I and, and correct me if I'm incorrect, did everyone get to answer the question in particularly? Ariana Evolution Be Known. Did you all get to answer the question as it relates to tools? Whether being it, it's a matter of it's not a matter of the user or it's just a matter of your use of it. Ariana, did you answer that question already? Um, I don't think I did. I don't think that person. I thought I, did, I didn't want to make sure I didn't skip anybody and I, and I thought I skipped somebody. So the question was, in, in short, what's important? The matter of tool choice or the tool? Or the, or the user in your case? Um, I will always have to say user. I think somebody brought up an excellent point when they said that Night Wonder was using Pretty Loops, you know? So sometimes we spend, you know, all of this time. It's just about what, like, again, your world. If you like logic and that does it for you, master logic. If you like FL Studio and that does it for you, you want to stick with it, master it. That's the only really requirement is just to, you know, 
make sure that you know when we hear that we we have that you know effect like that stank face you know what oh, i'm saying come on come on and, uh, so it, and if it's the npc ah man yeah. me, that's oh. what i'm trying to get to because i always i i didn't i ended up getting a midi when i should have you know started off on the npc because it's just it just hits me a certain way come so, on now <laughs> come on now it's, it's something about those paths to touch you know it, the, it's it's quintessential hip hop tool. We're on our last question, and wow. if you're just joining us, see this guy right here. This guy right here. This the, the guy at your bottom left hand of your screen. That's a Big Dave. Dave C. Dave C. had a task at the beginning of the show. Dave C.'s task was to take four records that I handed him at the top of the show and he had to come up with a beat with those four uh, tracks I sent him. He didn't know what they were in advance. He had no idea. And when he told me, he said, I don't just got one, I got two. I got two. So we're like, word? Okay, so we, <laughs> we, we're going to see the realness in just a minute. So we're going to ask one last question. Right. Then we're going to hear from our junior on deck, Sadiq Muhammad, brand new to beat making. We're going to hear a track from him with Big Dave. Last question of the night is this to everybody on the panel. Let's help out a new Jack tonight. Matter of fact, let's say you're talking to Sadiq, my son. What one thing do you think every producer should know? Do not even enter the game unless you know this. What one thing would you tell them? Uh, you should... You should know you. You should know what you like. You should, you should know what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. And you should know how you want to sound. You just got to know know yourself. And that, that'll that put you one step closer to uh, rising above the fray of people that hop, just hop in because they're, you know, trying to do what's popular. You know, know Know yourself and know, choose your weapon. Like we were talking about what uh, what instrument tools you want to use. Right, right. Find, find out what tool feels best, whether it's your loud pro tools, AC, uh, machine, or whatever. Know yourself and, and know your tool. Mm. And you'll be straight. Okay, okay. And remember, if you're not speaking, please mute your mic. If you're not speaking, please mute your mic. Okay. What'd you say, Iceman? Here, here, here's where I get a little long-winded. <clears throat> know the business behind this beat-making thing. Say that. Because 99% of the people who got screwed over in the business got screwed over because they didn't know the business and they didn't control what they made. Get your LLC, get your ASCAP and BMI, get your own website. Don't go to these little third party beat star sites that's going to rape you over their terms and conditions. Own everything you make. You know what I'm saying? You know, make yourself a brand. You know what I'm saying? Get you a logo, copy, uh, trademark your name. You know what I'm saying? Because nowadays it's so easy to get lost in the cracks and, and fall through the cracks of this business. And, you know, everybody, oh, I want to get signed. I want to get signed. If you are making your music, if you're doing your artwork, if you're doing your own promo, you are basically operating as a label as it is. So you don't have to get signed to a label. Go to your county clerk, get an LLC, open your own label, get your own bank account, sign yourself. So that way, when a label wants to sign you to a production deal or something like that, they can hit you as a partner and not sign you as an artist or a producer. Teach. Know the, know the business. You know, inside and out. It's easy to want to just sit and create. We all just want to be able to sit and create. But there's another side to this. And if you don't know, you will get sucked in. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
Thank y'all for coming to the show. Good night. <laughs> now, before we move on, let me also say, I, 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 I never met Brother Iceman a day in my life outside of social media. I want to tell you about paying attention and, and watching and observing. I watch and observe everybody around me. Brother had no idea that I had been watching and observing him. Until he got an inbox one day from me saying, yo, brother, you be talking that truth online. I, I want you on my label. <laughs> you know, I want you to come on the show. And um, I thank you for responding in the affirmative, brother, and sharing your wisdom. Brother online, every day, be kicking that knowledge as it relates to the music business, the culture of hip hop. And I advise everybody to follow brother as it relates to that subject. Matter of fact, I be doing screenshots and sharing them in my group. Listen to what his brother said. <laughs> so, so I, I and, and I, I make no bones about giving people their flowers while they live and telling them that they're doing good, whether they know it or not. So, brother, that salute is for you. Thank you. Gratitude. Well, moving on. What do you say, uh, Evolution Be Known? I mean, I don't know how to follow that. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> I mean, both of, both of those answers was great because it's important to know yourself and not get caught up in the way, you know, it's important to know yourself and know if this is what you want to do or not, if you really are a producer. So or uh, if you want to be a beat maker or a producer, you know, you have to know self and you have to know the business of it. You know, those are two very key components before you start anything. So I can't add on too much to it. I think that's pretty much said and done. Like, Born, you got something? Oh, I, I like, the, like the brother said, you got to know the business. You got to know your worth. Boom, say that and part. You got to know your worth. And you got to know what your craft is. So, well, you know, depending like he said, depending, like James Brown said, 25% is performance, 7, 80% is business. And we don't know the business because we so busy performing our craft, but we don't know the business. And then and, and contracts, know the contracts of things. You know what I'm saying? In in no different when you do um brother told me said contract is contract, but it had different language. Hmm. So if you know the language of the business, then you can make it. Do you don't know the language of the of the business, then you don't get you don't know what you and I and, and also we don't ask questions. Ooh. We don't ask questions. We just go along and everything. It sounds good, just dressing all that. But we don't ask, uh, excuse me, what that means. Come on, what man. What that is, all oh, you take it, say, let me take it, and then define it. It's like in the movie, uh, uh, NWA, where Ice Cube asks the we need to get a lawyer for it. You know what I'm saying? And he said, no, 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 no. Jerry is just, no, no. No, we need somebody because I don't know what this is about. So that's how that's how as Q became uh, uh, an enemy to to the, that lawyer, not to the group, but that lawyer, because the law was suing who who uh, suing a lot of short means to the group. So if you're not using your mind and learning the business and really to learn to ask the question. Then you gonna get you 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 gonna get uh you got you got that coming because mm. because it's all about conquer you know what I'm saying separate right. conquer you know what I'm saying in the business so you got you if you really love the business if you, if you love this what you do you got to learn what what come up behind it big time sister Ariel you got the last word. All right, I definitely have to agree um, to agree with brother um, DJ Iceman. He came out the gate, you know, with the uh, business, know the business. Um, I agree with Steve. I agree with Evolution Be Known. Know the business. Um, you know, trust your unique um, self. And um, I had a, a, a amazing conversation with a sister. Um, her name is um, Karen Marie Mason, and she's been around. Um, the industry for a long, long time, mm -hmm. being her damn self, and she'll tell you. <laughs> She's a beautiful, classy, as she wants to be. But 
one of the things she was saying was that um, she was the one that was talking about the fact that when, when you stay in your lane, you can get so much abundance in that area. But one of the things I was talking to her about was the fact that it's a, it's a consistency thing because you're going to be hit with so much in your life um in the attempt for knowledge to become a mm. master but you can't stop don't stop or you're not yeah. going to see your blessing so as you you know i'm telling you just get in there you know and perfect your craft and it's also it's actually qu quality yes, over quantity yes. it really is it really is you can try and make 10 beats a day you know, to set a record or something like that, but you might end up using the, 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 it might, they might all sound the same because you didn't give yourself a break, you know, to come back fresh. Um, I, this, this is brother. He made, he made records for over a hundred major artists. His, um, what is it? Uh, King Amadeus, I believe. Amadeus. And he was saying that one beat, master it one beat a day i mean if, if you even if, if you're at that rate but so definitely uh quality over quantity because you you don't want to bust open some um your whole catalog and play it and the people like you know and you have to keep playing records and keep playing records so they're like to try and convince them you want to close your laptop and walk out the door and they're like hey, hey what's right. your name <laughs> there you go right. I'm coming up to Come you. Like, what's your name i'm following you don't Come you leave on. this room you know, so make sure it's quality and then know your business because people will, uh, y'all, everybody probably seen the movie Beats on Netflix. Remember when the brother, he pulled back on the contract because I can't do you like that. Come on, what a team. I can't do you like that. So, and get, oh man, just people that love you um, and um, make sure that you get a test market for your things too, like listening. People that's not your family, that's not going to be like, oh, everything is, you. nope, nope. Okay, throw a listening party for your beats and get some real critique. Are y'all listening? Real critique. And surround yourself by no uh, yes men. <laughs> I cannot say it any better than that. On behalf of the whole Rockwell Radio Show team, I thank every one of y'all for coming out and spending this now hour and almost 20 minutes with us today. Um, I cannot thank you all enough for your time. I thank God for your talent. I thank God for your availability and your willingness to share it with the world today here on the Rockwell Radio Show. Um, you know what? Now it's time for that great moment. Before we do, let's bring back Big Dave into the circle. Big Dave, test, test the mic. Check one, two. Can y'all hear Big Dave? Five, Big six. Dave. Okay. Peace to the to the creators. Big Dave is back with us. Now we wanna pay tribute to the young lion on deck with us, my son Sadiq, sitting next to Big Dave. Son, are you ready to debut? Yes, sir. What record do you want the people to hear today? Which one of the three you sent me? Marty Bro. This is from Sadiq Amir Muhammad, professionally known as Monica. Monica, where can they follow you at? Uh, triple underscore Monica, pretty much everywhere. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Monica on the beat, on the beat, on the beat. Woo, woo, woo. Monica on the Monica beat. On the Monica beat. On the I love I love seeing <laughs> when the 
quote unquote youngsters reach back for that old gold that we uh <laughs> that we came up on. Come on now with that Mardi Gras. All right, you all in the chat room, give it to him, give him the feedback, give him the feedback, chat room. Let him see what you see. Let, let, let him look Kids at the be incredible. Feedback. It's gonna be incredible. <laughs> I can't even see the comments from me. <laughs> okay. That's what's up. You got you got the people nodding their head to it, Sadiq. Okay. So, Sadiq, tell us about that beat, how it came about. Well, being the son of a DJ and being the person who's... I, I feel like this is... Okay. Come, come on, that boy. Get on, get on that mic. Well, being the son of a DJ and being... Uh, practically inundated with hip hop culture as it is, I've always felt a strong tie to the, the basic break beats. And I've always wondered what you can do differently. Transposition, chopping, all these things they attribute to what makes what we love, what we love. Because we took, we took from, well, we didn't take anything. We reinvented our own cycles. We, in, re, we reinvent our culture daily. Every single time that we touch a keyboard, every single time we touch a drum, every single time we touch anything. So I took, I'm drawing a blank on who's the original artist for the Mardi Gras sample that- uh, That'll be Bob James, sir. Bob James, thank you very much. <laughs> the Bob James uh, Mardi Gras beat. Let's go to Mardi Gras beat. I took the first four or so bars of that and I chopped it. I slowed it down about 20, 30 BPM and mm -hmm. I chopped it from there and I, I just went for it. Y'all, that's the future of the funk. Monica, a.k.a. my son, Sadiq. Give him a hand, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> so now we are at the moment of truth. I wish I had a drum roll. I should have prepared a drum roll for you, my man. <laughs> nah, so, we, we don't need all that. <laughs> so be before you hit play, do a check. Do a beat check. Beat check. Do I mean, just like do, you know, hit a pad or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now before you hit play, let's review. Big Dave C had to give us something from Ashley's Roach Clip, The Soul Searchers. He had to give us something from Fred Wesley, Blow Your Mind, uh, Blow Your Head. He had to give us something from The Honey Drippers, Impeach the President. And finally, he had to give us something. I gave him a, 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 a sneak attack. A hard one. I gave him Howling Wolf, Backdoor Man. Are you ready to tell the world what you did, Dave? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting on some green slime to fall on my head once I hit the play button. <laughs> so you heard it right here now. Dave C made a beat on the spot within the show. Dave, is your show. I'm glad to take these scars for y'all. But when it's your turn to sit in this chair, <laughs> I feel like I need to uh, I need the opportunity to play a disclaimer track before I play this. But here it is nonetheless. And I'm, I'm grateful. This was real fun. On the spot, on the spot, on the spot, on the spot. Dave, 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 Dave. B, I can't hear anything. Yeah, we can't hear it. Okay, now what did I do different? Did you press okay, uh, let me check, let me check. Anybody out here look like some music <laughs> makes. <laughs> Can y'all hear that? Do a test. Play, play a pad. I'm playing pads, but I can't hear anything now. Hit again? Okay, there. Now, this worked just fine during the test now. All right, so we got you here. Can y'all hear that at all? Anybody hear anything? Hmm. Can you all hear me speaking? Can y'all hear him talking? Okay, you can hear me. We got the track up. 
We got that plugged in tight. I can hear it through my headphones. You can hear through your headphones, right? Yeah. Hmm. The silence sounded real good. The silence sounded real good. <laughs> play play one of your tracks from the from the deck. And we'll see if we can isolate this issue. God is shining on me. All right, give me a second here. Because we tested this and it was just fine. You know, it's always during the, when you actually do it is when the stuff happened. And that's something. Can y'all hear that? Nope. It's, very, it's, very, it's crazy low. You said you, but you are getting some of it though. Like, like it's in your headphones. Now he just sent that through my headphones at a thousand dB. Can y'all hear that? <laughs> yeah, it's it's still crazy, it's super super low. So. Now we work too hard to have this technical problem now. <laughs> wow. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I tell you what, Dave, I want you to do this. Talk to me. Save it to an MP3 and um, we'll run it that way and just send it to me real quick. Right, give me a second. Save it to an MP3. We'll get around that because I we need to hear the culmination of this beat tonight. And I. <laughs> really don't know what happened but until he does that and my right now we're at about 26 minutes overtime and again i thank you all for giving me this this part of your time because we can hear it clearly through the system so that tells me there's an issue because you keep going through the board through the show well we'll figure that out we'll figure that out check the news yeah i checked all the news big mike let's see one two, one two, one two, one two, one two. Not that one. <laughs> Not that. Give me a pad one more time, D. If y'all hear anything, let me know. Nope. That's wildin'. That's wildin' again, D. Nothing, y'all. Okay. Do that. I don't know what to make of that. Got off the hook. Okay. No, not exactly. We're going to hit this track tonight. So I tell you what. We'll do this. We'll ask one more question round table while he saves that to an MP3 and sends it to me. We'll do one more round table question. And I'm going to come off the top with this one. I want you all to give me. We always talk about MCs. Who's the top five? Who's this? Tell me who is your producer goat? Just give me one. Who's, who's your goat? Oh, come on. It's, <laughs> we do, we and, do and, top five. And, and we're talking not just hip hop. But all of music. Who is your producer, greatest of all time? Uh. If you do top five, it'll be too long. So just just throw one in there. Shoot, can you can you hear me? Loud uh, I mean, I'm a fan of the compositions of uh, 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 Maurice White and, and and Scarborough and those guys. If we're talking about you know just music, uh, yeah, okay. you know I. I can I can I can listen to that stuff all day, and uh, if we're gonna go beats, uh, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Primo. Okay. The mm -hmm. DJ Premier. Okay, okay. <laughs> Evolution be known. Who's you all go? Uh, I'm gonna do like I'm gonna do like Steve Chase. Um, if it's just composed, and I would say like. It's a tie with Barry White and um, oh, Isaac Hayes. Come on just, with that, yo. 
that, but um, but as for beats, it's it's Jay Dilla, uh, hands down. <laughs> uh, uh, man, for me, Quincy Jones, oh, great good. Quincy. Uh, he, he he you know for the scores, for, for movies, TV, um, he for uh, from jazz, all that. He's he, he know for all types of music, from beats. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, not yeah. I, 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 I had to go with Mattronics. Mm. Okay, okay. Mattronics, they had the game. Wait. No, who said Mantronic? What y'all know about some Mantronics, man? <laughs> they had the game. <laughs> okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. I, I got the I got the MP3 okay uh, while I'm downloading it. Let's hear from our sister. Who's your gold dick queen? Uh, so yeah, this this is really hard. Um, so one I'm impressed by. I have to say I'm impressed by No ID. Come on, why him? Catalog is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and then who else? And is y'all. Okay, one thing I forgot to say though, one beats that like really turned my head, like MF Doom. Oh my god. Uh, a sister mm. up on MF Doom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that cool album. I'm like, what did you do with Anita Baker's voice? That was crazy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Iceman, talk to us. Man, I'm 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 not gonna just go the the, the normal lane. As far as this like all encompassing music, Gamble of Huff, Sound of Philly. Come on, all day. Come on, all day. Sound 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 of Philadelphia. As far as hip hop goes, there's a lot of cats that people don't really talk about. Diamond D, Howie T, Talk Man Carter Roll, man. Um, Marley Mall, of course. Um, right now, currently, Snow Goons. These cats from out of Europe, yo, Snow Goons is off the chain right now. They did a joint with Primo, right? Yeah. Um, oh, uh, oh dad, I just had them right on the top of my head. Of course, Primo, of course, Pete Rock. Um, take it back to Larry Smith, Pumpkin, uh, Paul C. He calling the roll, man. You know, um, you know, uh, out of the West Coast, DJ Quick, DJ Slip, Battle Cat, <laughs> you know, um, Jazzy Faye, you know what I'm saying, Timberland, um, uh, Little John was the dope ass producer, uh, David Banner. David Banner, yeah. You know, there, there's just so many you just can't name. Herbie Lovebug, nobody really gives him the credit he deserves. <laughs> Brother. We are talking, brother just called the role so important, so important. But we are not. Did you say T Mix? Who, who you said T Mix out of Swap House? Uh, not T Mix. T Mix. I, I haven't really heard a lot of his stuff, but uh, April, not April, uh, MJG had a lot of good yeah. production, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, Pimp C, really dope producer. A lot of cats don't know he produced a lot of good joints. I Lord Finesse. That. Yeah, Lord Finesse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Another dope producer. You know, uh, Newmark and Cut Chemist. Man, you know what I'm saying? From, from Jurassic 5. You know, there, there's just so many dope producers out there that, you know, either don't get talked about, don't get the light, you know, mathematics. You know what I'm saying? Fourth Disciple. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic because we'll, we'll be here all night messing with me, man. <laughs> I brother, let me say this as we get ready to close out. The beat is ready to press play, and I enjoy this topic beyond no means. I'm telling you, it's two things that I'll keep y'all up talking about all night. One is the teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the second is hip hop. In that order, I'm telling you. So, and while we close out, all of you who are watching in the chat room, I want to hear from you. I see some of y'all making your comments. You put your go-to producers up all at all time. And this is a series 
It's a series. It's a series. We will bring this show topic again with a different panel. So if you're a producer and you make tracks or you got some 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 skin in the game, I want to talk to you on the next time we run this particular series. So again, with no further ado, with no further ado, Dave C was put under the gun and he came up. <laughs> Are you ready, D? Hey, let's do it. Let's do it. He came up with this. Next episode of of this. See somebody else. Uh, somebody else's creative. Come on, genius. But this was fun. This was fun. <laughs> Dave C did, did it. One beat. Or two beats in one hour. Y'all give Dave a hand. <laughs> <laughs> This is DJ Rockwell, and you've been tuned in for an hour and a half to the Rockwell Radio Show. Please, all of my guests, tell the listeners and the viewers where they can find you all on social media. Brandon, start with you. Uh, Steve Chase. That's an underscore Steve Chase on IG and Facebook. Uh, you can also catch me on uh, on YouTube. Uh, you know, B-Tape that I found last year on Mass Level B-Tape. So just... Uh, Go to uh, YouTube, Steve Chase Master Level Beat Tape, and you catch that. And I got uh, the album, in case you missed it, uh, that's going to be coming out in the next few months. Stay tuned for that. Peace. Salute. Evolution, we know. Talk to us. Uh, you can find uh, the Evolution, we know page is shut down right now. I got hacked. So, no, don't look at that one. But personally, uh, you can do on the Khalik, K H A L I K, at Facebook. Um, man, man. My, yo, you can go on to Born um, Born Talib on um, IG on um, uh, Facebook. So, and also you can go to our bad camp. If you want to check our music? Go to Evolution Be Known. Uh, our bad camp dot com. That's what's up, Sister Ariane. Okay, so you can go. You can follow me on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Ariane Nicole. You'll just take the L and turn it to a one. So it's N-I-C-O number one E. It's Arian Nicole. Um, check out my little budding production com uh, composition program, musicisalive.net. Um, and follow the artist Collective Phoenix. So those three right there. Brother Iceman. Uh, DJ underscore Iceman 70 underscore 73 on IG. Robert Anderson is my personal Facebook. DJ Iceman slash Big Boss Beats is my Facebook. You can also catch my beats and merch on www.bigbossbeatswithaz.com and uh, DJ Iceman official on YouTube. Big Dave C. Talk to us. Oh, you can find me on Facebook under Dave C. Muhammad on Instagram. Same, Dave C. Muhammad. And last but not least, the new young scholar at the at the uh, boards. Son, my heart. Sadiq, where can they find you at? You can find me at Moniker, triple underscore Moniker. That is M-O-N-I-C-K-E-R. Anywhere. Say it one more time. Coming soon. Say it again. That's Moniker. It's triple underscore Moniker. M-O-N-I-C-K-E-R. Triple underscore Moniker. The boy got bars. Come on now. The boy got bars. This is a family thing. You've been tuned in to the Rockwell Radio Show. We're over time. Thank y'all. Love y'all. See y'all next week. We out. Thank you. Peace. Rockwell Radio.
Radio. I'm listening to DJ Rockwell. Holla.